everybody, it's Sheila Keeter here, your teacher for inclusion. And today's theme is going to be, is it worth it? And I wanna cover all of the things that I have possibly recommended or resources I've told you to use and um, kind of reflect on whether or not those have worked for me so that you can take what you want and decide if it will work for you. So one of the first things um, that I wanna, the period that I'm looking at, the time period is gonna be from summer to summer. So it's one year from last summer to this summer. And that is the range in which I'm gonna be talking about. Um, the first, one of the first things that I recommended about a year ago was Amazon Ignite. It is a place where teachers can sell resources through Amazon. And I have a video that I did about that specifically. Um, and it's been a year, one summer to summer, and I made around $600 for the whole year, um, which isn't a lot. And I had posted around 50 products. So Amazon Ignite caters more towards the elementary school resources and I create secondary resources. So I think that people who do elementary school resources probably sell a lot better. Um, the market's not as saturated as it is on TPT, but your audience is smaller. So it's all relative. Um, so I only made around $600 in the last year. It does seem like sales get better um, as time goes on, but I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I haven't had a long enough time to really gauge that yet. So again, around about $600 for 50 products, that's not too bad. Um, something I would definitely recommend you trying out, especially if you do elementary resources. The next thing I wanna talk about is YouTube. Um, so I've had a YouTube channel for about a year and here's the thing with YouTube. I don't make any money. <laughs> I'm not going to make any money on YouTube. Um, it will take me about three years to get monetized. And if I were monetized right now, I would only be making about $10 a month. So whether or not YouTube is worth it for you is really gonna depend on some factors. One, are you a charismatic person? If you're a really charismatic person or you have a special niche, that people are interested in. Like I know there's a girl that does um, clip art and she has far more subscribers than I do. Um, people are really interested in clip art. Or there's another guy who has a channel who got his long after me, but he's far more energetic and charismatic than I am and he has more subscribers. Um, so if you are a charismatic person, you tend to make people laugh you think you could grow your audience quickly, then I, I say, sure, go for it. Um, as long as you're not going into it thinking that you're gonna get any real um, money, okay? Maybe eventually years from now, but um, it's, it's not a great source of income. The one thing though that I would say is if you have more general products, then you can get sales through your YouTube channel. I have a very specific niche, it's secondary novel studies. And so I don't, I get a lot of visitors that come to visit me, especially after I do an income report, people just wanna check out what I'm selling. Um, so I do get a lot of visitors, but I don't get sales. Um, but I know that there are some people who have like, a, who have developed a clientele by um, having a YouTube channel and people have gone to their store and purchased things. The other thing you wanna take into consideration is will you ever be selling courses? If you're into TPT for the long run and you just know that you're someone who is gonna to continue to progress and get better and evolve, then you might wanna consider a YouTube channel if you're gonna sell 
courses because it's a great way to get traffic to your courses that you might sell. I have two courses. Um, YouTube is my main traffic, um, my main sense of traffic for my courses. So in that regard, it has been slightly profitable. Okay, the next one that I wanna talk about is Pinterest. Um, Pinterest is interesting, <laughs> to put it mildly. I have had a real love-hate relationship with Pinterest over the years. Well, I, last two years, I have had a lot of frustration and then I think I have finally figured Pinterest out. If you're gonna do Pinterest, go all in with Pinterest. If you can't go all in, then don't do it because if you do it inconsistently, then it's not going to work for you. It's not going to be a major source of traffic for you. The reason why we do Pinterest is because we want that major source of traffic. And if you're not pinning, I'm not kidding, every single day, if you don't have a new pin every day and you're not repinning at least 10 pins per day, then you're not, it's just not going to work for you. Um, Pinterest is super finicky and the key to Pinterest is being consistent and it is really, it's a lot harder than you would think to be consistent on Pinterest. I mean, at the end of the day, half the time I'm like, oh, I forgot to repin. Um, I use the scheduler and I would recommend that so that those days that you do forget to create new pins, you're covered by two weeks. So I'm always I'm always ahead two weeks so that my pins are scheduled to go out on a daily basis. So again, Pinterest is worth it if you can be consistent with it. Um, but you let me know if you've had other experiences with Pinterest. The next thing I wanna talk about is a blog. Okay, so my blog, I've had it for a year and a half. Um, I have, I post one blog post per week and it is a thorn in my side. I'm just gonna be totally honest. Um, I'm an English teacher, I love writing, but it is hard and it gets old really fast. At fun, it, at, at fun, at first it's a lot of fun, but it grows old really fast. 1600 words every week when you have a job and I do teach as well it gets really old. So if you're not passionate about writing or you're not passionate about your products and writing about your products, because that's what you're gonna write about in order to get sales, because that's the whole point of your blog, then don't do it. Um, as far as uh, monetar monetarily, I have made $450 in sales in the last year from summer to this summer. Um, $450 where people have come to my TPT shop for a specific product from my blog and have made a purchase. Now a blog costs $300 a year to maintain. So I only made $150 and that's before taxes and all of that. Okay. Now my numbers have almost quadrupled in the past year. So there are more people, more eyeballs on my resources now than, than there were in the beginning. I got no sales in the beginning. And then in the last two months is really when almost the majority of my sales have come in. So it is a worthy long-term investment. Um, but make sure that you're making money on Teachers Pay Teachers first. If you can't cover that $300, for your blog every month through your Teachers Pay Teacher Shop, then wait until you can. You know, know that that it's it's not going to end up being an expense for you because that would be terrible to put all that work into it and actually it it costs you money. So again, um, gauge whether or not you're in this for the long run. If this is part of your retirement plan, you want to replace your teacher's salary. If you're in that camp, then I say go for it. 
If you are newer, I would say hold off a bit, but just know that you're gonna be writing for at least a year before you will see a penny, okay? You'll be writing for at least a year, maybe a year and a half, before you'll actually see any kind of um, monetary growth. All right, email. My email list, I just started three months ago. Um, I'm gonna throw that in here just because I've had a lot of progress on it and I have another video that you can watch if you would like about my email list and how I do that. Um, but I finally started my email list and I put my landing page on my banner of my TBT shop. So when people click on it to get a free novel study template, um, they give me their, their email lit, their email, which goes to my email list in MailChimp. It's all set up that way. And I have gained around 50 subscribers in about three months, um, which to me is not bad. An email list will also take up some time though. So keep that in mind. Once you have an email list, you need to write to people on a regular basis. I've kept it simple. I've kept them short. I've only sent out about four email four emails. I send them out like once every three weeks. I suggest you not send out one more than once a week. Um, I get a little bit annoyed with people who, if I'm on their email list and they're constantly sending emails, but um, you can keep those really short and low key as far as work goes. But I would recommend um, at the very least, even if you're new at TPT, if you know that you're gonna do this, that you start your email list. And I will put the link to my other video in the notes below so that if you would like, you can watch um, the video on how to create that, that email list through your banner in your TPT shop. I also have a website, which I just created, and um, I haven't gotten any sales on that. I've barely even put up enough resources, but that was a $350 cost that I felt was worth it because I, I make decent money through Teachers Pay Teachers. And so that's kind of a backup plan for down the road. Um, but that's something that I've also dabbled in a little bit. All right, and that's it. I hope this was helpful for you to make some decisions on long form content or short form content that you might wanna try out. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will